Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, July 8th. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonsalves is condemning rumors that the government chartered an aircraft from St. Vincent's E.T. Joshua Airport to Barbados' Grantley Adams Airport to facilitate a connecting flight to Guyana last Monday for a CARICOM Heads of Government Conference. His remarks came today on radio as he sought to clarify allegations that he was aware that the late flight was going to be that the flight was going to be late and he left others who were at the airport behind. Dr. Gonsalves added he was left with futile options which would have resulted in his late arrival in Guyana, where he was due to speak at 3 p.m. at 5 p.m. He said the dilemma led him to contact one of the pilots at SVG Air who offered him a ride and he had not chartered a flight as many believed. I began to be really apprehensive about it and then I thought, well, why not call one of the pilots at, at SVG Air to find out if they have any planes but they, they don't run regular flights to Barbados if they have any charter mm -hmm. and I could get a ride on, on one. Mm -hmm. They have to tell, they, they said to me, well, they were going to Channel One and coming up back maybe 11 o'clock on their boats. And if I'm at the airport, I could get a ride with them mm -hmm. going to Barbados. Yes. I didn't charter a plane. The government didn't charter a plane. Mm -hmm. I was just asking for a ride. Yeah. So I told them, I said, well, if I, if I get a ride, as well, John, Ambassador John also is on the delegation with me. But yeah, I just said there would be the space for two of us. I didn't know well, they had a specific charter or they were going to pick up passengers in, in, Bar, in Barbados. I didn't know. All I knew, I asked for and they said yes, they were going and I could get a ride. The Prime Minister noted that while he was sitting in the VIP lounge at the airport, he was approached by a gentleman who asked if he and his two counterparts could get a ride to Barbados. Dr. Gonsalves said that since he had not chartered the flight, it was not his call to make. I said, ask the people at SVG Air. Yeah. That's all the, com the conversation I had on this matter. But it wasn't my charter. I was only getting a ride. A ride. Yes. So I couldn't go and give other people a ride. <laughs> I didn't know how many seats were available. All I knew is that Elsa John and I could have gotten a ride. When I got on the plane now, I realized that there were seats <coughs> with the three persons <coughs> could go. And I told the pilot, I said, there's a gentleman from Liat who asked me about three persons getting a ride. I didn't know who these three persons were. Mm -hmm. And the pilot said to me, well... <laughs> You know, Prime Minister, I, I, I can't wait because I have to get to Barbados at a particular time. Yeah. You, so, this thing that I charter a plane, I had space on the plane and I refused people to ride. Entirely false. Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonsalves and his wife will attend the state funeral of former Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Patrick Manning. The ceremony will take place this Saturday, July 9th, 2016, from 10 a.m. at the Cathedral Church of the Holy Trinity in Port of Spain. The 69-year-old former leader of the People's National Movement for some 20 years was admitted to the San Fernando General Hospital last Monday with a fever following the removal of a wisdom tooth the previous Friday. He passed away in hospital while battling a severe lung infection. Speaking on radio earlier today, Prime Minister Gonsalves expressed his distress over the death of his late colleague. Report, um I have to go down to the funeral for Patrick Manning, my very good friend and comrade. Today yeah. it's the it's the hearing of the body in Port of Spain. And the funeral is in the morning. I have to make sure that I I can't risk it by just going this evening. In any case, I, I want to be there to view the body today. Though the viewing bodies is not really things that I like to do, but. There's some some things you just have to do, you know. You don't you don't particularly like it, you know. In terms of viewing bodies, I, I it hurts me too much, you know. You know people who I know, and uh, and then the funeral is on Saturday morning. Manning's death is being heralded as a monumental loss, not just to Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago, 
but to the entire Caribbean. SVG TV News extends its condolences to the Trinidad and to the Manning family. STEM, standing for Science, Technology, Engineer and Math, is a five-week summer program funded by Petrus Gums to involve the youth in these various areas over the summer vacation. The program was launched earlier today at the St. Martin Secondary School and was flooded with excited students of primary and secondary school age. Commencing July 11th, students will take part in science, technology, English, reading, visual arts, and math. They will also take part in structured sporting activities such as squash, tennis, or swimming. Founder Petrus Gums shared his vision and his expectations for the STEM program with us. Um, this program actually started when, while I was in the States, the idea was that I was working with some of the younger kids at some, my college. And I noticed that some of them are already into the development aspect of um, using what they know to create new and interesting stuff. And one of the questions that came to my mind is like, why can't my Vincentian kids do the same? But one of the things that we strive to do as well is create an environment where a child is free and comfortable to voice his own idea no matter how for want of a better description, dumb that idea might be. We, when they voice that idea, we take that idea and we kind of polish it, tune it, twist it, and then we make it into something that the child could actually see grow on their own. And the impact is not just seeing someone create an app or something, but the impact also can be self-esteem, self-confidence, and building that kind of um, spirit in the child that I can do this as well. Those kids over there can do it, so can I can do it as well. Parents as well as students shared their views on the program. Well, I think it's a very good um, program because, as I can say, this is the second year my son is coming back. And for last year, um, it was the first time that they introduced the primary school program level. And I find that my son, as a, um, a student from the Kingston Preparatory School, he is um, very intelligent. And I think with science, he's very interested in science and technology. So I got him involved. And through this program, he has learned a lot. He has um, grown um, immensely from it because there are some things he can do on the company that I can't even do. And um, he gets some of the training from the STEM program and I'm very, very much, very, very much recommended to any student who are willing to learn. I think it's a, it's a wonderful initiative. Um, it gives, the, gives the, the, the young people an opportunity to experience um, different programs that will not be available in the schools because of resources. I think it's a wonderful program and I think that children benefit very much. So this year my two sons will be participating and they are excited to take part in all the programs that are available. Well at first I wasn't too keen on it. My mother actually forced me into it because I was too lazy at home but I'm glad that she did. Um, I learned a whole lot from Mr. Gums and all the other teachers. I learned how to program robots. I've even taken up more programming even after the pro even after STEM finished off in the last few years. It's influenced me to take up uh, programming and engineering as my future career and whatnot. Well, honestly, it's a very good opportunity. I have done this before and what I learned last time was extraordinary because before I did not really know much. I just had dreams, but I actually do a bit of more what my dreams are right now. Before, currently I've already learned how to program robots. I've continuously studying it more now. And before I learned game development, I did some physics and that already, already helps me in my cur current time at college. And I'm just here to hope to learn more about it to help me with a better future so far. Thanks to Digicel, Our Lady of Guadalupe Home for Girls at Canaan in Mariaqua will unveil its newly renovated accommodations. The renovations, which were completed at a cost of some $84,000, will be unveiled this Tuesday, July 12th. The telecommunications company stated in a press release that they were pleased to make the upgrades at the home since it is the lone non-profit institution on mainland St. Vincent that focuses primarily on transforming the lives of suffering and abused young girls. At the unveiling ceremony this Tuesday, addresses will be made by government officials including Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, Area Representative Jimmy Prince, representatives from Digicel and members of the board of the Our Lady of Guadalupe Home for Girls. 
Calypsonian Bernard J. Cole Hazler is appealing for help from the public in raising funds to address a medical condition which requires specialized treatment. The popular Calypsonian from the Grenadine Island of Bekwe says that he has tumors which have accelerated in growth and therefore need to be removed. J. Cole says that some $4,000 Barbados dollars is required for the operation. That, that ha has been in me from since since childhood, since I born, I, I had those stuff in my blood. And so this start growing, I didn't really take it serious because I was a child at that time. But since I began to get grown, I get big and from a, from a, from a, um, from a, what they call a babe, come up to, to a junior, senior, then adult. Then I start, start growing and then I start seeing them. So, so I then I went to the doctor and the doctor Checked them and everything, and he he saw me. And then he gave me he gave me a, a, a prescription to go and take medications and all that. Then I went back to him again, and then he told me, well, they can't do anything about it over here. I have to go to Barbados to a specialist doctor on the on the operation. Maybe at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, hospital, or maybe at a private clinic. Jekyll explained that he is also organizing a benefit concert for some time in September or October to help raise funds. He believes that the event will also help to bring back the Calypso Art Forum on Beckway, where no competitions have been held since 2013. Yes, I, I train to organize with um, IPO, Grant the Constance IPO, and um, Vibrating Skakes, Kenneth Allen. And um, I, I would like to have Ab Abija, Elvis Abija, Patches, and some other artists. When I get to organize with I for them, and Skakes and Among Them fellows, Patches and them guys, then I, I will, I will meet, we'll have a meeting, we'll call, we'll call a meeting, and then we'll organize, organize the whole program, the shows and everything, and then we'll set a date. Okay, then. But, but it's between October, uh, September, October. and welcome to Carnival Beat. The Guinness Hits 103.7 FM, BMC agencies, Blondie Bird and Friends took home the coveted Band of the Year title as their presentation Sweet Temptation was too much for the judges to resist. The veteran mass band took home wins in several categories including the best individual of the juniors 5 to 9 and 10 to 15 age categories as well as the best junior section and the junior Band of the Year titles. Speaking with SVG Television, mass band leader Elroy Boyd, affectionately known as Blondie Bird, was elated with his band's achievement. Boyd noted that his presentation was superior to the bead and feather mass and attributed his success to a combination of talent with the craft, designer, ability, artist, conception, and motivated team. Biscuit and fries will never beat me. You'll never beat Blondie Bird and Feather Biscuit and Fries. Because you can't come down the road with the panty and the bad suit and beat we. Now we think it's craft and the craftsmanship can the most points and the people going in town, they want to see the craft. This is what we have over, over all the, the other bands. The scale of building the craft work, the craft. Craft is the most important part. They bring out the culture of the people, right? And we have a very good artist. Now our artists, no other artists in the country have more band the than him, right? So we have a very good artist and we have a very good team. The girls and them who work with us, they expect to come every year. We don't have to call them. From the time we launch, they come. So we have a very good team and that is what keeping we alive. So long as we keep doing the culture, no ban going to be in this country. Boy noted that the feather and bead mass, which he dubbed biscuit and fries mass, was taken away from the cultural aspects of Vinci mass, thereby reducing its attractiveness to foreigners. He added that there were other significant issues such as attempts to replace local ideas and names with foreign ones, which threatened the cultural aspects of Vinci Mass. Winston, Susan, Beckett and them fight hard to bring Raga. Raga was we think the trend that coming up to Haiti, Raga Soka. Now we take it and we call it now Groovy. Same thing, Fantastic Friday used to be a cook-up. 
Kyle will cook up with all the art for a mix up. The monkey band, the boozy back. That was the first show with all the cook up. Now we cut it out. We call it Fantastic Friday. So we're cutting out our thing. This is why people stop coming to St. Vincent and plenty of people staying home and don't come down. Long time they used to have a bar right up at Oti Garage there. The fellow used to build the stage, they call him Mac. That time we didn't buy no stage. Mac used to build the stage out of wood. Right? And he had a big bar right around there. No park park. Because we had no restriction of the mass. No restriction and telling you, don't open the bar till, five, till after this. And you can't have the music till after one o'clock. All them things kill the culture. That is the culture. While thanking BMC agencies, Hits FM, Guinness, and all other sponsors for their continued support, Boyd noted that large organizations who previously were band sponsors, in his opinion, have taken over Carnival. Boyd is calling on the CDC to ensure that activities are properly regulated. How oh, come I just educate the younger bands? If a young band come up by me, I shame boy, this is way to use, that is way to use. Because anything happen, it's better for the country. Get it? And that the big sponsors now take over the carnival. Long time now, you will find Guinness used to sponsor a fella. Flo used to sponsor a fella. Mustik used to sponsor a fella. Now them capitalizing on the carnival. Now them bringing the band. Get it? And now they, I ain't mind they bring the band, you know. But bring the competition in Jersey band. Where we design our Jersey. Now you're telling me bring in front line. When I get play you front line, who wish you guys pay me now Tuesday? Wish you guys get the money for pay me. So all are killing the carnival. And the CDC only can't sound who's sponsoring them. But you can't just cancel the sponsor, regulate the thing, tell them rules and regulation. A lover of everything cultural, Chiwali Johnson has always been fascinated with music and credits Calypsonians such as Sule, Manage and the Professor for, in, for instilling in him the inspiration to venture into his musical career. With 2016 being somewhat his trial run in the soca arena, Johnson noted that he is indeed proud of his journey thus far. In an interview with SVG TV News on Thursday, the newly crowned 2016 Raga Soka Monarch voices gratitude for the awesome reception his music has received and is promising even better deliveries next year. To be honest, I wasn't even thinking about just myself. I was thinking about the reason I started in the first place. You know, so my crown wasn't just for Chuwali, it was for my friends and persons who supported me. It was for Buzz Avenue, it was for Starleaf, it was for Lester to see him win both crowns on the night and to see the emotions that he had that was that was humbling for me because i helped him too so we helped each other the love that i'm getting is it's great you know it's wonderful and i hope that i continue to get that sort of love and i hope that i continue to please the masses actually i guess a little pressure is on <laughs> from winning this year to come back next year and even and take it up on, on, on another level uh, but, you know, that's what it's all about. You always try to do better than your, your last. Pointing out that the issue of sponsorship continues to pose a problem for all artists, Johnson outlined that until persons accept that musicians and even art leads do have a career, this issue will continue to plague the soca arena. Artists need help, especially when you put on a production of that caliber in a soca monarch. Make our foreign artists bigger, you know, push push their music more than we do our own. And until we, st we, we can correct that, then we would have more persons like Skinny Fabulous and Problem Child and so on out there making a living from their music, from their, from their God-given gift. Not hobby, their gift, because not everyone was designed to be a lawyer, a doctor, or a mechanic or whatever, you know. Being a musician is a gift. Johnson also credits Calypsonian Iper for some of his inspiration. The Lay You Had Court will come to life tomorrow, Saturday, the 9th July, as the Beckett Benefit Organization hosts Soka Masters too. In an interview earlier today with SVG TV, founder of the Beckett Benefit Foundation, legendary Calypsonian Alston Beckett Cyrus, noted that the event, which is held every first Saturday after Vinci Mass, aims to showcase and honor local masters and legends of Soka and Calypso. The ABC of Calypso promised that patrons 
a great show this year as they try to bridge the gap between the old and young soccer masters. If you don't book for the Saturday after Carnival, you're going to miss a great event. We had a, a very successful event last year, and we're hoping for it to go, grow stronger. We go in basically with um, Vinci Artis, Vinci Soka Artis, who we think have gained the status of master by their track record in terms of in this industry by hits. We make the decision to have young masters and old masters. We are just going with the old ones, but we realize we have to mix. To bring in the young people, we have to recognize the young and the old. We're trying to get both audiences together. We always have the separation. The older people, they refer to, to, to the older folks as old school and mm -hmm. this. So we try not to, we're trying to bridge the gap. And I think we're going down. I think that's why this year is going to be a monster, even bigger one than last year. Cyrus outlined his hopes for coming years of involving the public in the selection of masters and urged persons to come out and support this celebration of local talent. This year we have Scorcher, Bomani and Fireman Hooper. Bomani is a, is a youngster but he has a lot of hits and I'm talking from international hits being a, based on the outside. His song Wet and I Am Soka were monster songs but he's a, he's, he's a legend, in, a young legend mm -hmm. and Fireman, well we know he is a people's champ. Well loved by all intentions. We have a special guest, this problem child, who is who, who is a, 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 a we'll say from his hit status is a future master. Mm -hmm. Scorpion, what well, last day was was a was a featured mm -hmm. guest or special guest we should say, and so we'll bring him back. Singer songwriter Prima Donna Bascom believes that her songs for 2016 will impact the lives of listeners by encouraging them to be positive. The veteran songstress, who was interviewed for SVG TV's show Leadership in Focus, described her songs as introspective. Song is actually saying to you, listen, you're in my head and you're saying this and you're, you're confusing me, but guess what? I ain't gonna let you, you know, my, the outside influence my inside peace. Right, right. That's what the chorus is about. Mm. You're creating a crisis. You're all up in my business, mm. all in my head, creating a crisis. But I can't give you my power. And I'm talking to me, the power, in the, the one in the mirror. Yeah. So basically, it's a, it's a message to everybody. Listen, there's outside stimulation of all kinds. You could call it good, bad, it doing your this, it doing your that, you're doing your that. At the end of the day, you have to say, okay, what it is I'm going to let influence me. Take control of this gadget right here, because this is the most powerful gadget, your brain. So if you take control of that, you could imagine if every single person take control of their own gadget and not let every single outside influence Yes. determine their reaction all the time, mm. then you could see how much more sweeter life is going to be and the well-being and the stress level. And I know there's a lot of stresses because people need money, they need oh, yeah. things done and, and all kind of stuff. The singer-songwriter who was a Calypso finalist for 2016 is of the view that media agencies should air more positive music so as to motivate the youth kind of balance it yeah. so I know a lot of these stations are kind of privatized yeah, and they have yeah. their own thing and they want they're gonna say oh well let it let it let we play what we want we have freedom and speech but there's also even within the freedom there's an expectation and a responsibility yeah. of the media to also be influential they know that they are influential in the young people lives the second generation and therefore take care of that yeah. have that in mind when you're programming your private and you you know you're all up in your always oh, our own thing but, yeah. have that in mind mm -hmm. everything is not about making the buck and everything is not about supply and demand because yeah. guess what if your child want a supply of candy <laughs> and demand it are you going to supply her with that yeah. no you're not gonna do that you're gonna say I am the parent and you're gonna dress it up sometime and you know yeah, and you yeah. give them something but they say, okay, well, you give me that and I give you that. True. So it's, it's like balance. I say, balance it. Yes. Homeostasis is everything. Mm.